flexible, cost-effective, easy implementation, trackable, mobile-friendly. These are just a few of the benefits to using a QR code. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create your very own in Canva. We'll cover the three key steps in order for you to get your code up and running. From creation to implementation, let's get started. We'll start off by opening our project or creating a new one. In this example, I'll open a project I'm currently working on. From here, I'll come to the toolbar and select apps. Now, if you're just discovering this stockpile of apps, you're welcome. We'll then come to the search bar and type in QR code. Canva offers a multitude of QR apps, some created by Canva and others by third-party developers. You can explore the different apps to see which works best for your project. My personal favorite is dynamic QR codes. So I'll select that app and click open. Now for the first key step, we'll customize our QR code. Here you can see a number of different templates to pick from. I like this option, so I'll select it. Next, I'll add in where I want my QR code to take the viewer. The cool thing about these unique codes is that they can link to just about anything, from a simple URL to a direct downloadable PDF. In this example, I'll link my code to the Canva homepage. Next, we can add in our logo or leave it empty. If you decide to add in your logo, be sure to use a smaller logo mark. Adding in a full logo will result in a poor outcome as the app will reduce your logo to the subatomic level. Adding in an ownable brand element or a smaller logo will give you a better result. With that set, let's move on to the pattern color. Those are the little squares or dots that make up a QR code. To change the color, we'll select the color box. From here, you can click and drag the color picker until you have something you like. Or you can add in a custom hex code like this. With that updated, I'll then change the eye color. Those are the three to four boxes you see on each corner of the QR code. I'll select the color box and repeat the same process we just completed. Next up is the frame color around your QR code. And just like the previous steps, I'll come to the color box and change the color. Next, we have the background color. Here, you can change the color behind your pattern color. Now, from my personal experience, I found that messing around with the color can cause issues when someone tries to scan the code. So I'll leave it white as the more contrast you have with the background and the pattern color allows for less issues when scanning. And lastly, we have the dynamic option. This allows you to track how many people are scanning your code and other analytics. If that's something that interests you, then consider signing up or use the free version. Now we come to our second key point and that's implementing our code into our design. Now look at these three examples and see which of the three codes would cause the most issues when scanning. If you guessed this one, give yourself a pat on the back. You see, when implementing your code into your design, whether it's a business card or a pull-up banner, the key to success is making sure your QR code is not too small. If the code is too small, it won't be scannable and a mess up like that can cost you some real cash. So when adding in your code into your design, just follow the Goldilocks rule. Not too big and not too small. And that brings us to our third key point, which is testing. So get out your phone or other device and scan your code to ensure everything is working correctly and that your code is taking you to the correct location. In most cases, once you set your code, you can't go back into the code settings and update or change the URL. So be sure to thoroughly test your QR code. Try it at least three times on both screen and printed versions, as well on different devices to ensure that everything is working perfectly. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.